I moved back to LA and I got my own apartment in Santa Monica. And then you started working like just random jobs? Random and jobs, car wash, um, small food court at American Cookie Co. and Savaro. Nice. Nice. Um, what did you do at the car wash? I vacuumed. And then, um, and then I think my second show was at White Trash Charms, but with I think Dallas Clayton. Oh yeah. Was in it with his zines and my sister. I think I might be getting the shows mixed up. And then we had another one at Good Form. Uh huh. Dallas was in that as well. And then there was the one with RJ. So it was like my fourth or fifth. Yeah. <laughs> but we were just you know setting up in any friend's shop. Any or, place you could get. Yeah. <laughs> So then what was happening, I mean, at that point, with your, how long had you been shooting before that? Before my first show? Yeah. Um, about six months. Where'd you go to, because you didn't go to school proper, did you? No. Yeah, you just... No, I just went to, like, yard sales and found books nice. that said, photography, learn photography. And, and where did you learn how to use, like, you know, how to, like, process film, per se? Or, you um, know, well, I bought room. my darkroom equipment on eBay. Okay. And along with the, um, like, this used package that I bought, um, there was a book that, that said, like, how to use a darkroom and print your own pictures. And so I that just followed the instructions <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> said, I'm going to Switzerland. Come with me to sell knives. And how old and were you? And they needed English speaking people to work in the shop. Right. I was 14. Oh, okay. So I was supposed to be starting high school yeah. in a couple of months. And, um, <clears throat> and yeah. And your friends I spoke were like, to my oh, go, go sell knives. Yeah, I mean, they let me. I spoke to my parents about it um, a few months, or not, a few years later. Uh -huh. And um, they said that they kind of always knew that I was gonna do something in the arts. Uh -huh. So because they knew that, they thought that world travel and you know experience, just living life, was probably gonna be more useful to me in the long run right. than standard education. Right, right, right. I had a camera then that my parents got me, and they sent me off with like a hundred rolls of film or something. And I came back with the worst pictures ever. So, like, if you look through these pictures, there's no sign that I'm going to become a photographer <laughs> at all. It's, like, literally um, landscape after landscape after... There's no pictures of people. It's just these really boring, desaturated landscapes. of, And they all kind of look the same. Really bad pictures. <laughs> Shoot in a 1960s style. No, I'd say like more like late, actually late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, but really, um, it's just because of the colors that I choose that it looks that way, and the fake eyelashes because that was really popular. Right. But like, if you look in here, like, uh, I have a lot of. I mean, like this is definitely from the 80s. Um, <clears throat> so is this. And this, this is the 60s. It's more about the um, colors and the fabrics. And I guess in the 70s and, and 60s, the fabrics were a little bit more interesting, too. Right. Um, Rayon. Yeah. <laughs> like now, look at us. I'm wearing all black and yep. navy blue, and you guys are wearing gray. Gray. 
I'm all gray. So I, for a little splash I'm of blue, gray, I'm, I'm all gray too. This well, is pretty yeah, normal too, for, special blue. for contemporary, you know, yeah. dress. But also, like, look at the buildings that we make now. They're just so bland looking architecture. Everything is kind of muted colors. The cars. It's just that's the world we live in now. And if if I want to shoot vivid colors, I kind of naturally veer towards the past because that's where vivid colors were most popular. Whether, whether it's, you know, very um, obvious what I'm trying to say right off the bat, or if it's just a feeling that you get that you might respond to or not. Like, I just want people to feel something, basically. That's all I'm trying to do. Make them feel something real. Rather than just forgetting or ignoring or... Making them feel something real within the context of... Of this not, fake not, looking world that looks right, really bright not, and colorful and perfect where everything is okay right. and buy all the shit you want and eat whatever you, you know, like, you know, this, I want to make it look like there's this beautiful world that exists. about what's directly in front of you in the picture. It's not about the obvious. It's about the kind of life that you infuse, like the piece of yourself, not to get too hippie on you, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the piece of yourself that you put into the work right. that people can then communicate with. It's like a, it's kind of like a full-on communication that people will have with an inanimate object, and that's what art is. You can't do that with this table. Like, you know, a table is a table, it's, it's dead, there's nothing in it. I mean, unless it's a beautiful work of art <laughs> table. Right, right. <laughs> but um, I think that's the difference between, you know, objects and art. Well, yeah. Art is actually alive. taken a picture before. That's kind of what it feels like. Can you tell what's on my Oh, I got a GED at, when I was 16. So I'm not a complete loser. <laughs> <laughs>